You know, a couple of things I have not heard since this whole pandemic has begun. I have not heard job security, nor have I heard income security. So what does this all mean anyway? So in this episode of Seven Figures One, I'm going to share with you four qualities that make you invaluable and priceless to help you land another job or start your own business and become a first generation cash flow millionaire according to the what? According to the Bible? Yes. Beginning here. Three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping. Now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. What's crackalacking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here. Hailing to you from the Money Smart Home Office. And uh, welcome to another episode on Sundays. Currently, right now, we're calling this series The Big Local Baller Breakdown. But remember, a couple episodes ago, we announced the contest. We want to give you, if you're the chosen winner of how we name these episodes on Sunday nights on the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel, we not only are going to give you $500, but your local church or charity, another $500 in your name. So we're looking for some names. We're looking for some titles. Anyway, let's get right into it. So a lot of times people are looking for another job, looking for another opportunity. You know, they're... Uh, in a series of interviews, they're in a series of waiting, or on the flip side, you're looking to start a business or you had a current business, it's shutting down, it's having a tough time right now during the pandemic. And so we've been discussing how the book of Proverbs and the book of Ecclesiastes, if you want to have wealth, happiness, prosperity, and create a financial legacy, it's all right here because the author of the book of Proverbs in the Bible is a gentleman by the name of King Solomon, considered the greatest and richest king who ever lived. He talked a lot about this word diligence, diligence. And this word diligence, we've described in previous chapters, in previous episodes, that these qualities that we're going to be discussing here, just like diligence, must be nurtured. These are choices. Listen, I've got five kids, ranging from 25 years old to almost two years old. And I can tell you this, raising children, I can tell you this a little bit about human nature. You know, naturally, kids want to be what? They want to be lazy. They're rambunctious. They they want to have for themselves. They want to, hey, mean, selfish. Uh, uh, It's unnatural human behavior. We have to teach them. No, that's not right. That's not the right behavior. How, How many of you guys have kids too? And you might agree with some of the things I'm saying. But by its default, human nature is kind of weird and corrupted in a lot of different ways, even though we are God's creation. And when I'm looking at these qualities of how to be irreplaceable, invaluable, priceless, sought after, these are choices, these are qualities that must be nurtured just like diligence. And it really exposes this. It exposes somebody's character. Now, when I'm thinking about character, God is looking for godly character, right? God is looking for people of character, of noble character. Proverbs 31, a wife of noble character. What is character? When do you see character? Here's where I see a lot of character. I've been in a couple of combat deployments. I did eight years in the Marines. I've built a business. I've had my own practice. I've been doing entrepreneurship now for 22 years. And I learned a lot about people's character. Not in the good times. No, those are your fair weather friends. Those are your fair, fair weather family members. Those are your fair weather homies, whatever you want to call them. But I learned a lot about people and their character and their friendship, and our relationship when things don't go right, when things I don't expect them to want to readily be saying, I support you. I find out a lot about people's character when I myself am going across the grain and and going against what is common knowledge. Character is something that cannot be put on a resume. How many times you sit down and put together a resume, or you're interviewing somebody for a job, or you're looking to hire somebody for your business? and you look for their resume. Listen, uh, I've had so many people come through our doorways, come through our doors, come through our doors. If resume was important, then how come we have so many people that have master's degrees, even PhDs, broke, busted, disgusted, buried in student loan debt, no job, driving Uber. Nothing against that person. Nothing against their current reality, but why? If they were so qualified, If they're also certified, well, how come they don't have security? How come they don't have the next opportunity lined up? Why? Because his character is internal 
and not external. You know, we last week, I don't know if you saw the uh, episode, but we talked about the, the funny nature about wearing Gucci and, and jewelry and watches and all those different things. And people, obviously, it's obvious that people judge you by the cover. And what wisdom tells us, though, if you decide to pierce what understanding wisdom, let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Let's read this together. It reads like this. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom, the man who gains understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. So in this process, what are you looking for? What are you seeking? Are you seeking wisdom? So what is wisdom? Wisdom is not just knowledge by itself, but it's also experience. Knowledge times experience equals wisdom. Let's continue reading this. Verse 15, she is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand, and her left hand are riches and honor. So not only are you going to be invaluable, sought after, and prices, you're going to live a long life, and not only a long life, but a wealthy life if you pursue these qualities. So what are these qualities? Let's jump right into it. First quality. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 3, verses 4. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. What is he talking about? He's talking about truth and kindness. It's more valuable than the jewelry that you might, that might wear externally versus internally, which is what truth and kindness. See, truth and kindness, if you decide to express it and exercise this muscle, will then extend safety and security and your relationship will be treasured by others. When I sit down with guys in business, and I know that might have a checkbook. For example, I remember sitting down for my first board meeting, and this guy's a straight out baller. I mean, this guy's got billions of dollars. And, and he decided to take an extra moment of his day to extend me truth and kindness, what to expect if we're going to take a company public. He gracefully told me, Matt, listen, you've got some big aspirations, but right now you're too small to become a public company. Wow, he extended me truth. And the kindness is saying, but if you want to get to the next level, this is what you got to do. He didn't look at me. He didn't, even though he's a Wharton Business School graduate, who went to Wharton Business School, some of the top business people in the world today. And he did appear down to me. I don't have a college degree. I don't, I don't have uh, loads of money. I don't have loads of uh, experience in the business world. But he extended to me truth and kindness. And guess what? In return, we created a company that's been his number one portfolio in his entire equity fund throughout the pandemic. Why? Because he extended to us truth and kindness. And in exchange, we provided him safety, security, and a treasured relationship. The second part about truth and kindness is this. It builds encouragement in other people. Listen, during these tough times during the pandemic, when you're able to extend truth and kindness, especially to those that you love and care about, it's going to improve and boost their morale. It's going to improve and boost their self-esteem, their self-worth to say, hey, no matter what we're going through, hey, we can still be somebody, that we can be encouraged through this process. And even though we know we got to go through a grind, even though we know we got to do the extra hard work, we can still get this done because you extended truth and kindness. The third part about this, it increases to the people around you, it increases their commitment to you. It increases their commitment if you leave a job or a boss, they're going to remember, hey, I remember so-and-so from a previous company I was at. So many times I see company executives go from company to company, company to company, or business professionals, they start their own business and think, oh, this person did this, oh, this person did that, oh, this person did that. Why are they top of mind? Why are these people top? Why are they first in line to get a contract? Why are they first in line to be called to say, hey, come in for an interview? Because the relationship said, I'm committed to your success because I know if I hire you or if I buy from you, you're committed to your job and I'm loyal to that extent. You know, one of the things that we worry about in the industry that I'm in is that what happens if the relationship we establish one company and that person decides to partner lead to, to, another, to another company and they offer a substandard product or substandard support department? We worry about that type of stuff. So we ask them, hey, listen, if you're going to go somewhere, we are with you. We don't have a vendor relationship with you. We have a partnership with you that we're committed to you. We're loyal to you. And if you do right by us, guess what? Millions of dollars of business will be coming your way. But you got to extend us some honesty, which leads us to this thing here. The reason why a lot of 
barriers to truth and kindness come out because of this thing called dishonesty. What is dishonesty? Dishonesty is expressed with self-centeredness, self-involvement, exaggerations, white lies. Listen, I ran a sales force for a good chunk of my life. For the last six years, solid, eight years, we've ran a sales organization. And what do salespeople love to do? They love to tell, they love to exaggerate numbers. I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna do that. And when push comes to shove, and they're held to their word, guess what happens? They don't come through. You know why? Because somewhere along the lines, they gave themselves a little white lie. They lied to themselves about something else, which allowed them to lie to somebody else, and it's okay, no problem. The fact that they say something and they don't come through with the word, guess what happens? They're dishonest to themselves. And if they're dishonest to themselves, guess what? They're dishonest to you. So that's a barrier to truth and kindness. Listen, I'd rather say, if this is the goal, I'm going to hit the goal. Boom. I'm going to come through with my word. Why? If you come through with your word, the white lies are removed from your life. Guess what starts to happen? Trust and kindness starts flowing your way. You start believing yourself. A whole lot more and here's the thing too as well you might win short term like what's going on right now with uh, with uh, with uh, 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 Robin Hood what's going on right now with with uh, uh, GameStop and what's going on with AMC I see all that stuff these guys driving markets well you can say hey Matt well the billionaires are doing yeah just because the billionaires are doing doesn't mean that it's right I know that the game is rigged I know the, the 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 average Joe right now is trying to get his but two wrongs don't make a right. Just because you could doesn't mean you should. You might win short term, but you cannot say, I'm going to get blessed. God's going to bless my business, my career, my, my, my finances. You might win short term. And guess what? The price that you pay long term will far outweigh the short term wins you win right now. So going forward, you're asking yourself, why should, why should I care? Well, it's right here in Proverbs. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Let's go to number three. Generosity. Give freely. Do not expect anything in return. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verses 24 through 25. It reads like this. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. Let's go to verse 25. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Listen, one of the small things that we do, one of the small things I've shown my son, I uh, was a server before I became an entrepreneur, before we were blessed with this business and our finances and our experience in this journey of entrepreneurship. I was a server. I came out the military, I was a server. I was a Jiffy Loop Hood technician. I was a YMCA lifeguard. And I remember what it's like to live on tips. And one, one time we're uh, sitting down and uh, I think the meal was like $24. And I gave a tip to the server of $100. And I meant nothing, but I said, you know what? I've, I've been in this position before and I've been on the other side of money and I was expressing a little bit of generosity. I wasn't expecting to get praise. I wasn't expecting to get a pan on the back. But my 10 year old son looks at the bill and says, what dad? What? Because my son can read now, he can understand. Dad, it says tip, $100? Why are you giving her $100? I said, I said hey, listen, champ, this is the moment where I could be generous. This is, the, this is the moment where I could extend a little. I know what it's like right now with all these restaurants shutting down and service. I'm just thankful that this restaurant is open, that after the gym on Sundays, we can go here, we can, um, we can do our thing, we can enjoy this diner, uh, and we want, want to make sure that people want to come back here, that people want to work here. And I think I'm doing my part as an entrepreneur who's been blessed with finances that I can be generous. And he's, he's looking at this thing like, Dad, I can't wait to do this to myself. My son is wanting to give $100 in tips, even though the meal was like $24, $25. We had a bunch of, you know, you know, corned beef hash and eggs and hash browns, but our tip was $100. It was just four, five times more than what the meal was because I had the opportunity to be generous. And here's the thing too as well. It starts from the heart. It's not from anything like expectation. I don't expect anything from these folks. I don't expect anything. I don't expect to come back. Oh, the guy that gave us a hundred dollar tip is I'm not coming from that position. I'm seeing these folks here struggling to keep a job, to keep this restaurant on. The least I can do is not only order from that restaurant, but also take care of the people that's working there. Because if I've been blessed with well, much is given, much is expected. 
And when you're giving from the heart, it's an active decision. You just can't say, oh, you know, it's, you know, uh, I, I'm going to expect something to return and I'm going to give and, okay, I gave you, now what are you going to give me? See, that's the wrong position to do it. And we look at being gracious, which is my fourth quality. What is gracious is really, another word of saying gracious is gratitude. Do you have an attitude of gratitude? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 16. It reads like this. A kind-hearted woman gains respect, but ruthless men gain only wealth. Let's go to 17. A kind man benefits himself, but a cruel man brings trouble on himself. Let's continue to verse 18. You guys are going to love this one. It's so, there's so much to be learned in Proverbs. 18. The wicked man earns deceptive wages. Did it, by the way, did it say he earns no wages? So the deceptive man, even though he's dishonest, even though he does not expect expressing generosity, or in this case, gratitude and generosity, he'll still make money. There's people that are lying and cheating and stealing. Guess what? They'll have deceptive wages. But it says here in, the, in the, the rest of the verse, he who sows righteousness reaps a sure reward. 19, the truly righteous man attains life, but he who perceives evil goes to his death. Whew. Pretty harsh words there. Is that King Solomon extending us truth and in kindness through his written work? When you're looking at graciousness, you're looking at gratitude, this is not a pop, again, this is not a personality type. Do your kids, uh, when they're born, or when they're one years old or two years old, do they say, Mom, Dad, thank you so much for giving birth to me. Thank you so much for everything you've given me. Thank you so much for my food. Thank you for changing my diaper. Guys, you can tell already, it's not a natural human behavior to be gracious, to have gratitude. When do kids mostly learn about life and how good mom and dad potentially gave it to them, or grandma and grandpa gave it to them. When do they realize it? When they're kicked out on their own. When they're able to say, hey, you know, mom and dad had it pretty good, even though I may not like them, but sh man, it sure beats being homeless. Man, I can't believe how much toilet paper costs. Really, toothpaste costs as much money? A gallon of milk is five bucks? Guess what starts kicking in? Generosity and gratitude and realizing, man, I had it pretty good at home. I had it pretty good with my relationships. Second thing, everything you have, when you operate from the position of everything you have is a gift. Again, when much is given, much is expected. At any moment, anything you have can be taken away. And then what? How do you stand? How do you stand in the eyes of God? How do you stand looking at yourself in the mirror? How does your wife, how does your husband, how do kids look at you when everything's taken away? What character will be shown at that moment if you don't operate with generosity and an attitude of gratitude? Last point. Do you operate from a position of appreciation? When, when you're looking at Scripture, you're looking at all the different things here, and you're studying the Bible, you're studying godly behavior, and you do things for other people, other people do things for you. Do you appreciate it? Or did you just expect it? Do you come from a position of appreciation or a position of entitlement? There's two different things here, and two different personality types, and two different uh, um, uh, responses to that human behavior, but one, one of those two, will respond to you in a very, very favorable way in terms of what you want to do in terms of being priceless and valuable and somebody that somebody's always thinking about doing business with or hiring or being involved in what they're doing in their terms of their next steps. So that being said, guys, I hope you got something from us. What are your thoughts? What are, you, what are your follow-ups? What are your questions? How do these four qualities of being this type of demeanor in terms of godly behavior do you think will affect your business, your career? your endeavors. Do you want to be that type of person? Do you care to be that type of person? Please drop in the comment section below. And before you, I let you go, guys, watch these videos here. I did a lot of Q&A. A lot of you are posting a lot of great questions in the comment section below. I'm actually getting back to you as fast as we can with, with uh, uh, comments. Or in the last video, we did a Q&A here of my responses to you and how we're positioning these Sunday biblical Bible studies on how to be a first-generation cash flow millionaire in a way that lasts not only a lifetime, but lasts for generations. So with that being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Be invaluable. Until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be money smart today.